might want to catch up and join next time, um, but let us know. We will have it recorded and we'll be able to, to share that. Um, and at least they might have access to the resources. Um, thank you. Well, welcome everybody. We know some people will still continue to join on in the next couple of minutes and that's okay, but we are gonna just go ahead and welcome you, uh, those who are here. Two things, if you can please type your name into the chat if you haven't done it yet. And if you can uh, change your Zoom name, just add your grade level um, into that. And if you teach multiple grades, it's about like which grade you wanna go into a Zoom room with. We'll do things in breakout rooms by grade level. So just let us know uh, which grade level you'd like to, to um, you know, confer with in the smaller breakouts when we have a chance to do that. And we're excited to be here with you again today. And um, we're excited to be able to also uh, promise that we're going to get materials out to you. So I've put in two humongous orders to uh, Amazon and other sources and the boxes are arriving. And so you will have materials in your hands by the time we do our second session. Um, we are organizing today's session so you don't need any special materials for today's session, and you will have them by the time we do our next session. The things that you do need for today, a piece of paper, pencil, pen, maybe colored pencils. Uh, so hopefully you have those. Um, I have notebooks if you have one. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Abby. I have a question. Where are those materials going to come to? Are they coming to our house or are they coming to other school? So we will do what we did last time. So last time all the materials came to CRS and I asked teachers to let me know if they wanted to pick them up from our office or be delivered to your school. This time the materials are going to Johnny Wawaki, who is your district sort of all things science uh, leader. And, uh, and so he is taking, he and Tracy, who's here in our meeting, welcome Tracy, um, will, will um, take care of uh, uh, taking the bulk material and turning it into your individual kits. And then we'll send out an email um, to let you know what their plan is for distribution, which could involve you having the option to pick them up if you want, or it could involve them getting delivered to your school site. So more to come on the actual mechanism for getting them distributed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and begin. I hear a few more people coming in. Welcome, I'm gonna say one last time, um, if you just joined us, Please add your grade level to your Zoom name if possible. Um, I see a few people who have maybe not done that yet, so please do. And then um, please uh, type your name into the chat, which will help us to keep track of who's here and make sure that you get um, that credit for your uh, time here so you'll be compensated. Uh, and I'm gonna turn things over to Denise who will be leading us through our life science focused PD today. So we'll first, yeah, I'll screen share and we will have um, just some introductory slides about community resources for science. And before we go too far, I do also want to say just to make sure you are all at the right workshop. This is our workshop for the TK kindergarten first and second grade teachers. There's a different Zoom link if you're teaching third through fifth grade. <laughs> so if anybody is in the wrong room, Go back and check that email, make sure you're in the right room, but welcome everybody. And thank you, Denise. Oops, sorry, I'm I ran through these, so I'm at the end. Sorry, <laughs> I was practicing, okay. All right, then I'm gonna go into presents. And if you have um, any questions, oh, what happened to that now? Sorry, I was so ready, but I'm not, okay. I know what I did. Um, you can put them in the chat. And as you know, I won't see them, but maybe Teresa will see them. So yes, I will keep my eye on the chat. Right now, what I'm hoping to see in the chat is everybody's name and the school that you're at. Uh, I'm sorry, your grade level, your name yeah. uh, in the chat and your, um, and your grade level on your Zoom name. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and Denise, do you, would you like me to jump through these or do you want to? If you, if you want to or. Sure, yeah, you can go to the next slide then. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> now I have something on top of that. I was all ready when you guys weren't here, but now that you're here, I'm not ready. So there we go. All right, slide. That's fine. We're all here because we are working together to inspire these 
amazing kids. Hopefully we'll be able to be back in person with them at some point in 2021. But while we're working remotely, we're going to continue to inspire them because they are the people who are going to be solving the future challenges that we face as we see those scientists and healthcare workers and others who are helping us combat this pandemic right now. We know that it wasn't too long ago that they were sitting in their kindergarten or second grade or fifth grade classrooms and they got inspired to go into the careers that are helping us to get through this right now. Um, so thank you all for the, devoting your teaching to uh, helping ensure that these kids get these learning opportunities that'll help shape their imaginations for their own futures. Um, and we are, I uh, hope that you all have the CRS web website bookmarked. And I hope that you know, you can always go there to find support I know a lot of you have had scientists come visit your virtual classrooms this year. We've been to 600 classrooms already this year. It's very exciting. Yeah. Um, so if you get those invitations, we'll offer a few more uh, throughout the remaining part of the school year. Please uh, take those opportunities to share science and meet scientists for your students. I will share with you some links later. You don't have to worry about it now. That will have all the resources that we're sharing with you today the slides, the lesson plans, the, the pages of our website that Denise shares with you. Um, and we have those uh, in a document that I'll share with you. And we also have those curated on our website in a special page for our Richmond and West Contra Costa teachers. So uh, take any notes that you want to take, but don't worry, we'll share all these resources out with you as well. And I mentioned the Bay Area yeah. scientists in schools. It should be Bay Area scientists inspiring students. We changed the I and the S since we are not physically in schools right now, but that's okay. Um, so you'll get those invitations and you can go to the next slide, okay. Denise. And, and, that's, that's us. Yeah. and that's us. Denise is leading you through again today. And I mentioned Tracy from the district is here. So she can also answer your district questions. Uh, feel free to put things in chat. We will uh, save the chat. So anything we're not able to get to in our session today, we will circle back and get to you. So if you have questions, put them in the chat. That's where we will, um, we will save uh, that information and uh, get back to everybody if we don't get to your question during our live session. Um, very good. All right, Denise, I think we are at you. Take it away. <laughs> All right, at me. Um, we're, this is what we're gonna do today. We're going through, um, several, two activities, some sketching and labeling, breakout rooms, um, and then some seed sprouting resources that you can use hopefully before our next, our next meeting, but whenever you can get them, whenever your kids get them. And, and let's start. Um, we already talked about this. If you have something to write on, science notebook would be best because, you know, know us, we're always pushing science notebooks. Uh, something to write with and something to color with would be good. All right, so this is what we're doing today. Spring is here, time of sciences of life. And I just picked out a few pictures here of different kinds of life sciences. And I'm wondering if anybody can think of some other pictures that could have been included. What did I leave out out of all the scientists of, sciences of life? If you unmute yourself and just say it, that'd be great. If you put it in the chat, that'd be okay too. Plant. Plant, you're right. I didn't put plants on there. Anything else? Oh, there they are. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that, but you're right. Today we're talking about plants. So uh, going back to the last one, is there any other pictures I could have added to spring is here, life sciences? Any ideas? All right, we'll go to plants then. Hey, what kind of plants do you see here? Are all plants exactly the same? Or do you see some other kinds of things here? By the way, I'll be um, kind of sometimes talking to you as adults and sometimes, oh, human, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I didn't put humans on here. I didn't put fish, weather. Mushrooms. Yeah. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Now I have some cactus, so I, I caught up on that one there. I mean, obviously there just wasn't enough. But anyway, I'll sometimes be talking to you as though you were a student and sometimes as though you were who you are, a teacher. 
All right, so let's get going on plan. All right, um, we met for physical science earlier uh, in the fall or in the school year. And we talked about how now our, uh, our rooms, our classrooms were our laboratory, our science laboratory. But we kind of want to talk about plants now. And you probably have some plants in your house and this have some plants in your house, but we want to talk about the plants outside. So I'm going to ask you to take a look outside your window. And I think that you could ask your students to take a look outside their window. And then I'm going to say notebook, but if you just have a piece of paper, that's fine. If you got up and went to your window, or if you can see it like I can, sitting where you are, just just look outside your window and see what do you, what do you see out there. Observe, notice, use words to describe what you see. And you'll see things that aren't plants too, I assume, and you can put those on this notebook page if you'd like to. This is just looking out your window and seeing what you see, seeing what's there. So take just a couple of minutes to do that in your notebook. And while you're doing that, if you joined us after the very beginning and didn't hear me ask, I'm going to remind people, please type your name into the chat so we know who's here. And if possible, put your uh, name on your Zoom name, add your grade, uh, a K or a 1, uh, so I know which group you want to go into breakout rooms with. So if you joined us a little bit uh, after we got started and didn't hear that, please type your name into the chat. That'll help us with the attendance and get you credit for today and uh, add your uh, grade to your Zoom name. Thanks. Okay. All right, if you're not done, that's fine. You'll have some time. I'm gonna go into the next slide though. All right, so this is kind of what we're getting to. I want you to pick one kind of plant. It could be a tree or a shrub, a flowering plant, a vegetable, anything that you're particularly interested in. And it's totally up to you. And it's totally up to your students, unless you put parameters on it, what you're going to se select. And just think about it. how would you pick one to select? And why would you pick that one? Why was that interesting to you? If you have picked one and you'd like to put it in the chat, that'd be great. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to get out there and to look out there and see what interests you. I wish that this is what I saw out my window, what's in that beautiful window that is in the, that's what I wanna see. Our succulents, a lemon tree, passion fruit. Ooh, fine, that's great. Succulent, ashen barn, red roses. Ooh, nice. Ooh, my roses aren't blooming yet. I don't have enough for that. All right, and then just make a note. Why is that plant interesting to you? Okay. Sorry, I thought I was changing the slide. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go into some science sketching. And for some people, this is easy and they love it. For other people, it's like, oh, I can't, I can't draw anything, but you can. Just take a picture of your one special plant. Take a picture in your mind. Try to make it really look like your plant. I'll make it big. Fill the whole page with your plant as it looks today. Because what we're trying to see is, if, is it going to change? As the spring hits officially and as things change outside, is your plant going to change? And maybe you're picking one that's not going to change and you'll find that out because you have to go back and draw it again like once a week. So just a warning, once you've done this, leave a few blank pages in your notebook if you have a notebook. So you can, you can face the growth or the non-growth of your plant through time, the sketching through time. All right, I'm going to give you a few minutes to draw, draw your plant. Just try to make it look like the plant you see today. Not the plant that comes in your head sometimes, 
not what we call kind of like those the stick plants, the stick trees. I'm very good at stick drawing. I have to really think and slow down if I want to do realistic scientific drawing. It's 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 almost a way of I don't know calming down too, just to focus and observe, look at the details. So I'll give you. I've been talking this whole time. I should let you. I should just let you draw for a couple more minutes. Hi, welcome. If you are just joining us, we are just doing a sketch of something that we see out the window. Uh, and you can add your name, uh, type your name into the chat so we know that you're here with us. And then um, uh, you can add your grade to your Zoom name. Um, and we are just getting started with looking out the window and making a sketch of a plant that we see that we're going to be observing that plant over the next uh, couple of weeks. So pick one that you like. Okay, we have about one. But of course, you're, gonna, you're at home with your plant. You can draw more on it later if you need. I'm going to ask you now to, um, we can keep drawing, but we're talking, we're going to practice a little bit. I think, did I skip this? Sorry, sorry. Oh, I don't know what happened. Okay. We're going to practice labeling. And labeling means writing about things. So let's look at this picture that's on the screen, that beautiful plant that someone with far better science drawing skills that I have, Drew. It's just lovely. What are some things you could say about that that flower? What do you notice? We need to write some information on this page. It's not just a piece of art. It's a science documentation. So we need to get some words in there to help us remember what was going on. Anybody notice anything about that flower? Again, you can chat or unmute. Long flat leaves, uh, there are right. buds, and one in full bloom. Yes, we okay. will all get the slides. Uh, people have been asking, yes, you will get the slides and all the resources we're sharing today. Um, lots of petals, stems. And I, I saw somebody counting. Counting is a, often a, a part of documenting your, your science journal, science drawings. Um, and then does it remind you of something else? Maybe, maybe it makes you think of another kind of plant or something that's not a plant, even possible. So these are some things that the kids might need too. some practice on what kind of words can I use to describe this? So if you're talking about this plant, we already put some words there, but now let's go to, um, to your, plant sketch. What kind of things do you think you need to write on it? What words can you use to describe what you notice? And even though we didn't draw this, you might want to write about the things that are around the plant. That, that might be an important thing to include too. And keep in mind in this particular drawing, you're going to draw this plant several times 
over a period of time, like I would suggest once a week. So you can go ahead and do some labeling on your on your own sketch of your own special plant. Okay, I see, yeah, that's good. Um, my plant's not flowering. Flowers are puffy, pom-poms. These are all different kinds of words, fluffy, descriptive words. We're trying to you know, tie science into vocabulary, of course, that's a big part of it. Ah, somebody sees raindrops. <laughs> okay, good. So go ahead and label what you think is important on your plant. What you don't want to forget for this one day. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, I'm wondering if making a note of what the weather was like today would be a good idea. Okay, anybody have some suggestions of things we absolutely don't want to forget to label on our picture right now? <laughs> Color of the leaves, pink. Oh, good. The squirrels like to jump, jump in it. Oh, there's a plant that squirrels. Oh, now I'm curious about that. Somebody put the date and location. That's important. Um, oh, twisted. That's a good adjective to describe something. Describe. Okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. All right, here's some things that a lot of teachers use. You might use it already. It's called the I know, I observe. What do you already know about your plant? And then I wonder, what do you wonder about your plant? And it reminds me of, does it, what does it remind you of? <laughs> uh, Teresa had put this um, in our notes and I was like, what is that? <laughs> but now I know what it is. It's I know. I wonder, it reminds me of, so oh, that's good. And since you're gonna be looking at this plan over time, you might wanna just do a little speculation. What do you think will happen to the plant? Do you think it will change over time? Why will it change or why won't it change if you don't think it will change? Why not? Let's get a little scientific reasoning in there. Back up your, back up your statements with some well, evidence with some research you've done, with some prior knowledge that you already have about your plant. And your kids might will have some of this stuff too. They will have seen these plants before probably out their window. Okay. Hi, welcome. If you are just joining us, we are doing an activity drawing a plant we can see out the window and we're doing a little writing and reflecting on that. So if you just joined us, feel free to look out the window and pick something to uh, draw. I love the things that people are suggesting that their plant reminds me of. Someone said it reminds them of peppermint. It makes makes it makes her, Abby says it makes her think of England. Someone else said their plant makes them think of a corsage or a pom-pom. A pom-pom, I, I saw that, that's interesting, yeah. Uh, now I wanna getting, see. Getting allergies from the pollen. There's some really good um, things that people are connecting to what they see. <laughs> oh, and it's shady and Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I went to the wrong slide. Anyway, this is where we're going to go, but I went there a little bit early. Okay. Actually, it, it is getting, it's, it's, we're right on track kind of for going in the chat room. So I will go to that slide. Okay. We're going to put you in breakout rooms based on, on grades. So you can always show off your, your, your pictures and your labeling to everybody in your breakout room. 
But also we'd like you to think about what kind of props would you use as notebook prompts for your students to have them write about what they're drawing. Another thing would be what could you use as discussion prompts with your students. And what portions of this, the activity that we've done, the plants through the window, would you use for live or synchronous, synchronous um, yeah. <laughs> curriculum? I've always had a hard time with these words. And asynchronous, because I don't have to use them all the time like you do. And um, Teresa's going to put you in rooms, and then there'll be jam boards there. Teresa, do you want to tell, um, just say a few words about using the jam boards? Or? Yeah. So, is there anyone at this point? I know we used jam boards in our last PD session. A lot of you participated in that, and you're probably using them with your students. It says needs access, and did I put the wrong link in? Oh, let me oh, see. No. I thought I put the link in that had the sharing settings for everybody, but Oh, always, always a challenge with these things. So yeah. it should be anyone can edit. And do they have to be in their rooms to reach it or no? No, no. I just posted the link in, but it might have been the sharing link. Okay. So I don't know if it changes the link. I changed the share settings. That is the link. So let's see if it acts. Yeah. There we go. I see people getting there. Uh, so there are, um, you don't have to necessarily be on the same page in your breakout room. I just created a few of them for, uh, for grade level. So if you're in kindergarten, uh, you know, with your breakout group, pick one of the kindergarten pages. If yours is filling up and you want to duplicate it and create another, another page, feel free to do that. But there should, within your breakout group, just find one that has the grade that you're in. And um, I think what Denise would like you to do is first, just go, you're, we're gonna give you time, don't be rushed. She'd like you to go around and share your picture, share your drawing, what you, what plant you chose, kind of why you chose it and, and talk about that for a minute uh, and let everybody have a, a turn to sort of think about that, what they, what they wondered about, what it reminded them of, and kind of what they might be thinking about looking for over the next couple of weeks. Kind of practice that discussion. And then in your group, think about for your grade level, what if you were going to do this assignment for your students, what, uh, what would be the prompt? You know, what's appropriate prompt for TK or kindergarten to have them have a discussion about the, what they see out their window, what they've sketched, and what would be the writing prompt? What would you be asking them to write or draw in their sketch, uh, in their notebook um, at that grade level? So you have a takeaway from the end of the session, a very specific grade level prompts for this activity that uh, Denise has just walked you through. So I'm gonna send you into the, your breakout rooms does anyone have a question about uh, what you're going to do when you get there? Pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah, and, the we're, and we're going to give you at least 10 minutes and, and maybe an extra minute or two. So, um, and you should have about four people or so in each breakout room, three or four. So it should be a chance for everybody to have a chance to talk. So I'm going to open those breakout rooms and we'll send reminders over the broadcast. Uh, to help you keep pace. So the first thing to do, share your drawing and share what you observed and what you noticed and what it made you wonder about. See you back. <laughs> I love that. Okay, welcome back everybody. All right, is there anything you'd like to share out? We'd like to hear what you were talking about. Were there any good ideas or anything that came up that you'd like to share out? How about kindergarten and TK? Okay, yeah, we could do it by grade. Um, somebody <laughs> recommended doing a potato experiment where you watch the roots grow, which is good for this time of year. Nice. Yeah. And you could label the discussion. I like that. <laughs> label um, the parts of the plant. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. 
Um, first grade, anybody have something interesting in first grade? Well, I think for me, like, even like for what I was doing is I was wanting to get up and move and like go leave the Zoom and we were kind of worried about that. So giving them a chance to do it like the day before to like go observe that, you know, and like, oh, you can take a picture with your parents or something like that, that they could then, because some of these kids who live in apartment buildings and like, they look out their window, I look out my window and I see dirt, you know, I don't have anything right outside my door. So that sort of thing is giving them that opportunity beforehand, because otherwise you're just going to lose them all running around the house and going, ah, I don't have anything. And then that stress. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So planning. Now, I wondered about that. How many, how, if, how many students would not have something out the window, but they must be able to see the outside at some point, right? They can, yeah. Well, and I was even thinking like, okay, well, if you look out your window, wherever you are, maybe you see a squirrel, maybe you see the dirt, maybe, you know, look closely. Do you see a tiny little dandelion, you know, that sort of thing. And you can look at the changes outside your window over the six weeks. Right. But you could do the same thing by just going on a walk too. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, you could. Or would, it, or what if you had a plant in your house, you know? I mean, maybe someone's got a plant in their house and they might not have a plant outside that they could watch. So if they had a plant in their house, or like you said, a potato, they could just take a potato, put two, you know, put two, you know, paper, um, um, toothpicks in the side, put it in a, in a, in a, so easily put it in a um, water and watch it grow over the next few weeks. Yeah. yeah. The district gives out potatoes. <laughs> they do, yeah. It used to be Tuesday. I don't know if it still is. Thursday. Thursday now. Okay. Yes, right, I so noticed on the on the first grade uh, Jamboard with the suggestions. Um, I also noticed the um, the word bank a suggestion of uh, so having a word bank um, for students to think about words that you might want to see on their labels uh, so they can remember what to include in their plant. So that was that was a, a great. Uh, vocabulary development opportunity uh, together with this uh, activity. And I have a potato if anybody wants to. <laughs> what is that? In the class. Yeah. Uh, okay. well, it's in a cup and this is the beginning. It's only been in a couple days. We do it for about three weeks and if they don't have their own potato then I um, they can observe mine. I posted right. my class story on Class Dojo. Nice. Well, one of the things we're hoping to do for our next meeting when we get together on the 31st is talk about having planting experiments that they can do because the, the materials are coming. So not the potatoes, but the actual seeds are coming So, in cups. So maybe they'll be watching. That. But that's a really creative way to think about it. Those who can set theirs up at home can do that. And those who don't have the opportunity to do that, if you have one that you're setting up that the whole class can be following, they're still able to participate and observe. So that makes it a really inclusive opportunity. I see on the second grade Jamboard some good suggestions around what might be asynchronous and what might be synchronous. So it looks like you guys had a good discussion about, um, about that. And I see the uh, zooming in, using hand lens to zoom in um, oh, as a good yeah. prompt for both uh, writing and discussion and drawing. Um, so that's, that's really great. Okay, well, I think we'll move on. I'm going to share the screen and give you some resources on sketching and labeling. Uh, excuse me. Um, let me just let me just get there. I should have done that way. All right. So you did a great job and your prompt. Thank you very much. All right. This is one that I always liked in terms of labeling and giving resources. And I'll show you in a minute where this comes from. It's a community resources. It's on the community resources for science page, but it's the A, B, C, D, and E. Just make it accurate, big, colorful, detailed, and then explain. So all of those things are part of scientific drawing. And the page that this came, and I, I just love the name of it too, the A, B, C, D, E. Easy to remember. 
Okay, this is um, one of the pages from the Community Resources for Science called Science Notebooking and Sketching. And I was just gonna open it up and show you a couple of, of my favorite things. I'll need it up. I did put into the chat the link to the resource document that has both the slides and the Jamboard and um, and then the specific um, uh, web pages that uh, Denise is sharing with you. So hopefully all of those links work. And if they don't, I'm sure I'll hear about it. I see people on it, although I see people saying they can't access it, but I know that I see people's little icons on it. So hopefully oh, we'll are. figure out what there might be some little glitches. But uh, if you're having a glitch- Can you those links to us as well? Yeah, it'll go out in email as well. Um, but I know it's working because I see little icons on it, but I will email it to you all directly as well. So don't so, worry, yeah. you'll get the link. So there's like tips to getting started if you don't have your kids drawing already, where to start. I know obviously it's much different in TKK than it is in second grade or what I used to teach was fourth and fifth, but we start young and build the confidence and, and and just build their skills to observe and and slow down and really look at what's around them. They'll, they'll get there. Uh, here's more about the ABCD. Um, here's some zooming in and zooming out, comparing the same leaf over time, or two different leaves or two different flowers. Um, I like the over time thing in when I was teaching. They liked it. The kids looked forward to it. Once a week, we'd go draw the same tree. And they picked out their tree and they slowed down. But some of my really favorite, one thing that I really love is John Muir Laws. If you haven't seen his stuff or seen him, I've, I've seen him speak twice through a Community Resource for Science workshop. He's just wonderful. He makes you think you can do it. You can really do it. And he has all of these free online lessons and then of course this stuff is just beautiful so so that's that's fun um another one that i used a lot that maybe at this grade at the younger kids is not that not that helpful but i'm just going to show it to you anyway it's um that, that part is not that helpful but this it's about art and science all wrapped up it's different things about shading Look at that bird, that's beautiful. Um, lines, I liked this. We did a lot of fun art and science with this kind of making different kinds of lines. The outside, uh, text, make it like it's thicker, thinner. Oops, faster, so I guess I'm done with that one. We had a scientific illustrator who created those resources for us and thinking about ways to begin. And so if you, had your students begin sketching, introducing, thinking about lines. And then as you go through, you know, doing a little bit more of the sketches, thinking about each time adding something. So adding shading, and then another time adding some strategies for texture, you'll build their uh, confidence around doing their sketches as well. Um, so those are some useful, useful resources from a great science right. illustrator. So well, that's, that's Oh, I was just going to say, I think it's important because that was one conversation we had too, is letting the kids know the difference between sketching and drawing and that like the sketching, it doesn't have to necessarily be perfect or, you know, like you want as much detail, but you don't want to spend like an hour sitting yeah. there. So somebody was also saying for like the younger kids, showing them samples of like what a sketch might look like because they won't know the difference between sketch and draw. Right, that's a good point. Very good. Good. So there's, yeah, there's all those resources that were there and whatever you already know is always there. Oh, I didn't put out a lot, but there are examples that you can show your kids. And this was sort of over time, sort of just show the progression over time. And they're not that complicated, but, um, but they get the point across that something changed, something's different now. So there are examples online. Um, all right, we have a very quick activity and it's called living or non-living. And so after you drew your, your special plant that you're gonna watch over time, then you leave a couple of 
I'm assuming everyone's in a notebook, maybe you're not, but I'm gonna talk like you are anyway. Um, a couple of blank pages, maybe three, so you can look at it over time. And on your next page, make it look like this. This is the living or non-living page. We're gonna talk about, we're in life sciences, science, right? What is life? What does that mean? And what things around us are not. So if you went back to your window or sitting in your chair, looking around your room or don't have a window to look at, just go down and just now and take a couple of minutes to jot down some things that you see that you think are living and some things that you think aren't living. And if you have time, put a little, a little late, um, reasoning in there. Why do you think this is a living thing? Why do you think this is a non-living thing? You can do that. Just give you a couple minutes to do that. And some of you are having trouble accessing the slides. I reset the share link, so they should be working for you now, hopefully. There are all kinds of things you could get to. Never mind, I'm going to show you that. So I'll show you that. <laughs> so we're just saying things. Um, again, while you're drawing or writing or documenting your living and non living ideas, how would you like your students to discuss or share the data that they've co collected? How do you do that on Zoom? Would they say it out loud? Would they be in breakout rooms? Or I know there are ways to answer all the questions you have for them. I think it's Seaside in this district. Somebody That's said they drew Horton the elephant today. I love it. <laughs> and again, this is from the CRS website and this I'm just giving a couple of examples here. Someone said one of the ways they Sylvia shared from kindergartners they lift it up and show it is one of the ways they share That's their drawings. That's very physical. So there's different things like this that if they could cut them up at home, mix them up. So you'd have some pictures to work with if you needed that. So what else is there? I'm just kind of showing you things that are there. I like this one a lot, but it might be older. I think maybe second grade would be okay here. So you draw a picture of the object or take a picture, describe it. And then here's some questions because we're trying to get to the, what is life about? Here's some questions that might help them get there. Is it living or not? This says it's kindergarten. Some beautiful pictures are attached. So what about a rainbow? The rainbow living, let's answer some questions. Does the rainbow move? Does it change? Does it breathe? Does it make more just like itself? Does it need food and water to live? Oh, those are some interesting questions about a rainbow, I think. <laughs> Teddy bears, okay. So there's that's one. Thought you could go to. This is a whole mini lesson about uh, living and non living. And it's, it's over several days and it's all on the website. And it ends up with this kind of reasoning. So you start out if it has a face, so then maybe your teddy bear is alive. It has a face. Well, let's keep thinking about that. Does it talk? Does it have a heart? What are the most important things? So that's one lesson you could use. I see a lot of teacher comments um, about using Seesaw as a great way to share okay, um, and have gallery walks and have students sharing um, the, the work that they're doing um, with, uh, with galleries. And uh, Seesaw, although somebody is asking uh, Madison has shared there are 15 pre-made on Seesaw and uh, someone is uh, very interested in learning oh. about that. So uh, <laughs> we'll, again, save the chats and do follow up. Uh, yeah, I don't, I questions don't know coming. Seesaw. It sounds like there's some really great ideas about how to use some of this technology 
um, to bring some of these lessons that were originally developed for in-person instruction and how to continue to adapt them for this distance um, teaching and learning. So those are all on the website and they've all been shared with you. And then there's a slideshow that goes along with this idea of was it living or non-living. So you could discuss this with your students as you go. Is, um, is, <laughs> is, this, is this thing a living or non-living? It moves, I know it moves. Maybe it's living, I don't know. Um, this, I love this picture because I like elephants. So. So this is already set up there, but if something like this is on Seesaw too, then you have two options. That's good. Oh, that's interesting. Is a crystal living? If anybody's done any crystal experiments, they do grow. <laughs> and babies. So that's already there for you if, if you want to use it. Is a car living? So I think that would be. I don't know, personally, I think that was a great conversation starter with the kids to look at things and discuss if those are living or non-living. Okay. And I think we're- You are just right. right on time. You are doing- I, I know, I was just this looking at that. Okay. Awesome. We, have, so we always are so ambitious and I really appreciate all the sharing that the teachers are doing. And as you know, any of you who've been attending CRSPDs over the year, you know, we are so ambitious. We always have so many things we're excited to share with you and never enough time. And I know that's what teaching is like for you. So <laughs> this is great, but we are staying on time today. So good job, Denise. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm going too fast. Now I'm worried no, about no, going too fast. <laughs> perfect, perfectly on pace. All right, so um, those were two activities. The documenting something through the window that you can watch hopefully grow or change through the spring. Um, having, having discussions and workshops and figuring out what's living and what's not living. And then this is a seed sprouting. You can sprout seeds everywhere. So there's plastic bags and trays. These two again are from the CR, CRS. Just going to show you what they look like. I love that picture. I've done this one before. Just all the different beautiful seeds, and as they grow, how do how do the seeds look different? How are they the same? Is there a faster one? A slower one? That's it's a, it's it's not a hard one to set up either. If you want to set it up as a demonstration, that might that might work. I mean, I think that would work. Um, and so I'll just, as you have a chance to look at that resource, maybe this is a good moment for me to interject, Denise, and just let you know, because I think we had it in our planning. Um, this is a good place to let you know, um, you will be getting in your material kits, you will be getting some of uh, an assortment of seeds for your students. So uh, first off, some apologies, because you will get, a bulk, some seeds and some baggies that you're going to have to put into smaller envelopes or distribute um, into the kids' kits uh, because we just couldn't get 2,000 radish seed packets and 2,000 green bean seed packets. It was not possible to find them in those quantities, but we could get bulk radish seeds. So you will get wheatgrass seeds and radish seeds. And so for this seed sprouting activity, you will also get um, a sandwich size Ziploc bag. So you, if your students have any kind of a material at home, like a napkin or a paper towel, um, probably even toilet paper, they could use that to, to have, um, to put the seeds on and to keep it damp and then put that inside the plastic um, sandwich bag that you'll get in your kits. So the students will get that as a basic Thing that they can um, sprout. If there are other ways that they can get other access to other seeds, again, that could make a really interesting gallery walk if some students have been planting um, with their families or have some other types of seeds. Some are really big, some are really small. It can be really interesting to see how long it takes for the different types of seed to germinate. And then they look all kind of really interesting and different as they, uh, as the roots and the, and the shoots emerge. Um, so it makes for a, a lot of um, interesting, both drawing, sketching, 
uh, writing about what they're observing and keeping some data over time, but also some nice, interesting conversations and sharing. And again, thinking about what you might do synchronous and asynchronous. But in your kits, you will get the radish seeds and the, and the wheat grass seeds for this particular activity. Um, and then there will be, uh, you will also get green bean seeds, which we're going to do uh, another activity uh, with. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that next time. So you'll get three types of seeds for your um, student packets. This was a, a basic, this is um, when the scientists are in the classroom. Another abstract about that is fruits and seeds. Um, cutting board and knife, obviously these are things you'd have to really think about how to do, but you're cutting open the seeds to see what's inside. And I noticed that um, Mystery Science, I'm going to show you some Mystery Science in a minute, but not this one. They actually have an activity, it's called Scientific Fruits and Scientific Vegetables, where they show the inside and you really figure out what a scientist means when they talk about uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, because there's always the argument is tomato or fruit or a cucumber or fruit or a vegetable. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, next slide. So these are our three mystery science um, that I thought just, they just totally go along with what we're talking about. And the progression over the grades is kind of fun to see too. And I'm not going to share from here, so I'm going to, no, I'm not going to stop sharing. What is it I'm going to do? Ah, I'm sorry, let me think myself through. Okay. I'm going to go here. I'm going to actually go to these. I'll go to the kindergarten one first. Um, what do plants and trees need to grow? And I just wanted to show you that, I'm not going to show the whole lesson, but on step 10 of this, First, you, that, that's sort of like the experiment that we're giving you things to do. But on step 10 of this, is this one which- Instead of putting seeds in soil, really your teacher yeah. puts some seeds in a plastic bag with a wet paper towel. A bag and a towel. Both are in the sunlight. Discuss. And then I just, I just love the watching the seeds grow. And Look at the plastic someone... bag each day. Oops, Can you be the first? see a root I'm come out of the seed here. it but will look I'm, like a white squiggle sorry oh no that's fine i was just going to mention someone asked about the mold growing and i think that putting um putting it in the sunshine really helps uh every time that i've personally done this activity with kids and students um if the if the paper bags uh, the sorry the plastic bags are in a sunny enough location and use just a little bit of water they don't but you can't have the paper towel be like sopping wet um it does help to uh avoid the mold the, the balance is not letting it get completely dried out keeping it damp but if the whole paper bag is in a sunny enough location, that will help prevent uh, the mold from growing. Sorry, to no, that's okay. that no. question was popping up in the chat. So that's I wanted to, know. to call that out. But this mystery science, I think in some of the write, write up to go with the lesson yes. plans that we've included uh, on your resource sheet and in mystery science, I think there might be some tips around that as well. There, yeah, there were, there were. And another thing I noticed in the extension on the kindergarten one, I just thought this was fascinating. They show you different things growing, a pot of cord seeds growing. I mean, I can't show my students, but you can't show your students that immediate, you know, this fast. I don't know. I just think that was interesting. You so can that, do a, a time lapse potentially. Yeah, yeah. And I like how they move and so there's several of those. I'm not going to go on to all of them because we're keeping our time. So that was the um, kindergarten plants, growing plants. And then the first grade is one of the reading books that um, I don't know how people feel about those, but it's an experiment that a boy or a girl, I don't even remember, doesn't matter, that a student does with her son, with the sunflowers. And it's the read along and my name is Jen. And... My name is Jen. This is my dad's garden. And last year when dad planted the garden, I mostly played in the dirt. I noticed the ladybugs and other beetles. 
Anyway, so. I have an idea, I say. Let's plant sunflowers in both places. Then we can see what happens. So that's the beginning of this sort of experimenting. And then when you get to the second grade, um, mystery science gives you different, this is, could it live without light? This is another, I thought really good activity that maybe you could do with some of the supplies that, that you're gonna be getting. So, um, there was all of that. <laughs> I forgot where I am, oh, okay. So I, I think mystery science is good and I'm assuming people know about it because it's available to everybody in West Contra Costa. It has been for a while, but I'm sure it really is right now. So those are just three that I found, but there's lots of them there oh. that are good. And that's it. That's it for me. So there we go. Okay. So we were going to do, we have a couple of things to do with our time left. So first of all, we know it's really important for you to have a little bit of planning time to think about the resources that we've shared with you. And so we are going to put you back out in your breakout groups and give you about 10 minutes to think about what you might do, what lessons you might do to explore the mystery science units, to look at some of the lesson plans, the links, and think about what you might do with your students uh, using any of these um, ideas and resources. And so we're gonna give you some planning time. Uh, you're gonna be in a breakout room with people, the same people you were with before. So you can use it as planning time, but you can also kind of bounce ideas off of one another, ask each other questions, share what's worked. And we're going to give you, uh, you know, about 10 minutes to do that. And then we're gonna bring you back. Uh, we would love it if somebody is willing to share out a thing or two, an idea or two, a goal that you have, what you might do between now and the next session. Uh, but we're gonna give you that 10 minutes of planning time right now. And then we're gonna bring you back for one last bit of our time. Uh, so I'm gonna hopefully successfully send you all. Somebody's asked, a couple people have asked about time cards. I'm gonna say it one more time, just for anybody who came in a, a little bit after we said it at the beginning, you don't need to turn in any specific um, district time card, but do make sure you've typed your name, uh, helpfully your name in your school, but at least your name into the chat. So we have that record of who's been here and attending. And I've tried to um, double cross, double check, not double cross, double check it against our, um, uh, the registration form when you signed up. So I think we know who is here and not here. So uh, any questions before I pop you back out to breakout rooms for a little bit of planning time? Hopefully all the links are working for everybody uh, for the documents and the slides. And so I know it's just useful to sometimes have time to think about things. Um, so we're gonna give you some of that time. So here you go. For being back, everybody. I hope that you had some productive planning time and planning conversations. John from the district who's handling the materials was going to come and chat with you for a minute, but he is jumping back and forth between our session and the uh, third through fifth grade session. So while we're waiting for him to come, I am going to paste one last thing in the uh, chat here, which is uh, your exit ticket. Um, and if you would like to begin working on that uh, survey while we are waiting for John to come back, that would be super helpful to us. So if you answer those questions, quick little one or two sentences would be super helpful. And then we will be uh, coming back to do the follow-up session on the 31st, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and we hope that by then you will have done at least one or two of the activities that we've shared with you. And we will be, um, and you will have materials in hand uh, and we'll be able to talk about the next things that we're gonna be sharing with you uh, for using those materials. So we're excited to be able to do that. And I don't know if John's coming back, but hope, oh yeah, the, well, the ports program we did, um, that's been one of the things that, uh, Many teachers have been enjoying this year. Uh, that's been really great. It's uh, the state parks. There yeah. is John. Take it away, John. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. Well, yeah, because I was just gonna say we talked about kelp today at from the ports. Oh, <laughs> so cool. Yeah. They have a lot of them on leaves and seeds, and although I think most of them are sold out um, for this year. Um. So, hi everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um. Hope you had fun.
Um, there are materials coming your way. Um, we're going to try to figure out details, but we're, you're going to get enough for all of your kids. We're either going to drop them at your site or we can work out some way to pick it up and you'll get more information um, on that to come. But those will be the, the two options. And, um, and I, I would hope they'll be, be to you sometime in the next week um, if everything goes well. Nothing has arrived yet, but um, that's imminent, I believe. And we'll get those out to you as soon as possible. Um, remember, there's no time cards for this session. We're just using the Zoom reports anyway for your at uh, attendance. And we're really hoping to see you at the second part. Remember, this is a two pack. So we wanna pay you for both, for attending both. And, um, and so we'll see you at the next one. Um, make sure to let me or Tracy know if you have any questions or need more support. And I know Teresa and Denise are available as well. Um, and I will say also thank you to CRS. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Denise. Always love working with you and having your, your support. So um, this is great. Really looking forward to this. Looking forward to, to some hands-on science with our kids. Um, and just really appreciate just even the effort to make science happen this year um, in distance learning with all this stuff. We get it. You guys are, are working hard just to do whatever you can. And, and so just appreciate, we, we, we appreciate the effort, um, you know, anyway. Yes, we do. We, we, we love being part of this community and sharing with you as you guys are figuring all this stuff out. And um, really, as we said at the beginning, inspiring your students to understand their world better and imagine their future place in the world and what they have to contribute um, and giving them opportunities to explore and discover those talents and interests they may not have even known they had. Um, so I'm going to ask you one more time to please do the, please do the survey. That's super helpful to us. And it's also, we're using that to help fill in the science superstar form. So those of you who are further along, you're almost going to get that science superstar recognition. Um, and then uh, we will, uh, if you have, I mean, we offered in the, in the fall session for those of you who took a couple of you asked, oh, I team teach with another teacher who couldn't take this session. So we, as I mentioned, have enough material. We are recording this. So if any of you do have, you know, a, a colleague that you are confident would use the materials and teach these lessons and you want them to be able to get a material kit and, and you'll let them watch uh, the video and, and, and access these materials. Let me know because we, we you know, I'll kind of, I guess I'll say to be fair, first come first serve, but we'll be able to provide some additional materials kits. So if you know you have a colleague, uh, email me with their, or Corinne, uh, with, the, with the name and the grade and the number of students and we'll try to make that happen. Um, so thank you everybody and thank you to Denise and um, we will, uh, as you, if you finish the survey, uh, you know, that would be super helpful and then uh, we'll circle back with more information and see you in a couple of weeks. Happy spring, happy planting. Thank you teachers. Bye, boring. Nice to see everybody. I'm going to bail on you, Teresa, and do my art. That is great. Thank you so much. Great job, Denise. I am saving the chat so I get all the names.